Retro Night Gaming here. Um, we are going to do a quick how-to video today. Uh, another Batachera workshop, step by step. I'm going to show you really quickly how to set up your arcade joysticks to be able to play N64. Um, this can also apply to other systems like PSP um, and PS1 if you choose. The one thing I want to state before I go into this is just know that you will be able to have general functionality, but there's some things that are going to be missing. As you can see on the depiction of the N64 controller, it had quite a few buttons, more buttons than a standard six button joystick setup has. And it had a control stick and a D-pad. So by default, your joystick in your, your arcade cabinet is set up as a D-pad. But as we know, on N64, movement was done with the little control stick in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that you can have movement and then you'll have your buttons, but you are going to be missing the D-pad. So if you really want to play N64 like it was meant to be played, I highly recommend using an external controller. But if you want to have general playability, you want to play Mario Kart with your friends on your arcade cabinet or play Mario Super Mario 64, you can absolutely do that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into N64 and we're going to load up any game. We'll just load up 40 Winks, because we're not actually going to play it. By doing this, we're going to gain access to the back end, which is called RetroArch. All right, so once we're in here loading, hold down the select button and hit the south button, which would be the A button. So select plus south, all right? So now we're in RetroArch. Um, you can do all kinds of things with the back end on here. You can map your buttons, you can change your screen aspect ratio, you can choose what uh, bezels are, what the bezels look like, which ones are up. You can, you know, change nearly pretty much everything. You can make your screen turn vertical if you choose. All right, so from here, we're going to scroll down to where it says controls. We're going to click into controls with the A button. We're going to scroll down to port one controls. Click into there. All right. The only thing you really would want to do or need to do right now um, would be to change the D-pad to function as the control stick. Okay. So what you have to understand with this is where you see on the left-hand side where it says D-pad, um, remember that the system considers your joystick a D-pad. Okay. So... Um, when we're changing things, we're deciding what happens when you push up on your joystick, down on your joystick, left on your joystick, and right on your joystick. So to do that, we highlight it, we hit the A button, and now we can choose what we want it to do. Okay, so for N64, you would scroll down here and you would select Control Stick Y. And then for D-pad down, click on it with the A, scroll down here. Control stick Y plus. D pad left, once again hit the A button, scroll down, control stick X minus, and then finally D pad right, click on it with the A button, scroll down to control stick X plus. Okay, so that's it for that. Now your joystick will act as the control stick on the N64, but we have to save it. So what we're going to do is we're done here in this section, so hit the B button, which would be the East button, according to Batacera, to go back one level of menu. Scroll up to the top here where it says Manage Remap Files. Click on that with an A. Right now, your active remap file is common. We're going to go here, and we're going to choose one of two things. If you want to save this, do this the easy way and save this for all the N64 games so that you'll have control stick access with your joystick for all N64. You're going to click Save Core Remap File. If you only want to save it for that one particular game, you're going to click on Save Game Remap File. So let's just save Core Remap File. There we go. All right, and if you notice, this is I've got uh, the Parallel Emulator set up so it shows up as Parallel N64 as the new remap file. Okay, that is set. All you're going to do then is exit out. Hit the B button, hit the B button again, scroll up to the top, hit resume. You'll be back in the game and then exit out of the game by holding select and hitting start. But before we go from here, I just want to say 
what happens if we change our mind? We don't like the way the mapping went. We've added an external controller. We want to change things. What we do is we go right back to controls, go back to port one, go, I'm sorry, go back to manage remap files. And then you can actually delete the core remap file that we just made. So let's do that. Delete core remap. It goes back to being common. There you go. So there's no way you can break it. If you map it wrong, you can always go and delete your game remap file. As you see here, I can do, I just created the game remap. It says 40 winks. I can delete game remap and it goes back to common. Okay. So if you save it as core, which is for the entire system, save it as game for the individual game, you can always delete and start over again. All right. So while we're at it, we will just briefly go into PSP because that's another one that people with uh, arcade machines sometimes like to try to play with, um, with joysticks. Um, and so I'll show you that in a minute. Just be mindful that that's all you have to do, really, to be able to, uh, to play. If there is uh, any additional buttons you want to map out, you know, because the A button, the B button, the X, and the Y will already be mapped. Um, sometimes, you know, you don't have trigger buttons. So um, you can go ahead and, you know, map whichever, whichever buttons you want to do. You can map them out, the C buttons and so on. Um, but the important part is you've got movement now and most of your buttons are going to work. And if you need to, you can go down and change what specific buttons do. You can hit the left shoulder button and then choose if you want it to be the Z trigger instead of the left trigger and so on. And then just save it as a remap, just like we talked about with the, with the D-pad buttons. Finally, one last point. Um, under this, you're only, if you're only doing port one control, so that only covers player one. So if you're going to do this and you want to be able to play with, you know, two players, let's say four players on your four player, um, arcade cabinet, you know, playing Mario Kart, you're going to need to do the same thing that we just did for port two, port three, and port four. Okay. So before you hit the manage remap files, if you're planning on having multiple players, just go in and do the same thing. D pad up set it to, you know, control stick Y minus, you know, D pad down, control stick Y plus and so on. Okay. When you're done with all the players you want, usually port one through four, go up to manage remap files and hit save core remap for the whole system or save game remap just for the game. All right. Finally, we are going to exit out of here and we'll go over to PSP and just take a quick look at PSP. Normally, um, most arcade machines are, are running off of a Raspberry Pi 400, so that's why I'm speaking about N64 and PSP. When we get into things like PS2 and PS3 and such, if you are using a, a PC to run your cabinet, you know, you're literally are using a controller with a lot more. You've got two analog sticks, a D-pad, and um, six buttons. So that becomes more difficult when you, you're having to sacrifice um, multiple forms of control. It's a little easier when you're doing an N64, which had a D-pad and one control stick, or the PSP, which has a D-pad and one little button, one little uh, control stick button that's on the left-hand side. All right, so let's just pop in here real quick. Okay, once again, we went into the system that we want to remap. We started the game. We're going to hold down the select button and hit the south button, which brings up RetroArch. We now are going to scroll down to where it says controls, click on controls, and then we're going to go into port one controls. All right, so right now, you know, the D-pad is set to be D-pad, but you have to be mindful that you know, on the PSP, a lot of movement wasn't, you know, some games have movement with the D-pad and some don't. So, um, you know, it, what it works out being is, it is the, um, left analog is, is what, um, your, your D-pad is. So, uh, I'm sorry, is what your control button is on the PSP. So what you would want to do if you wanted to map a joystick to be able to play PSP for movement, you need to map it to that left analog. So what we would do is D pad up, we would hit it with an A button, 
we'd scroll down to left analog Y. And then, there we go, D-pad down, left analog Y plus, D-pad left, X minus, D-pad right, X plus. All right, so now, at least for movement in games, you can you can play PSP with your joysticks. You are going to be missing whatever the D-pad does in that particular game. Um, the A through uh, A, B, X, Y buttons would already be mapped. Um, your shoulder buttons um, are also already mapped. So in general, you don't need to go and change any of those. So hit the back button, scroll up to manage remap files, and then either save game remap to save just for this one game, or save core remap to save for the whole system. And then that's it. You've got your uh, PSP set up to have movement from your joystick. Um, I always recommend using external controllers, but I understand there's a lot of people that really love to play um, their ca arcade cabinets with just the arcade controls. And so there is a way that we can make a lot of the games actually playable, and this is how we do it. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to um, post a comment. You can also contact me through my website, RetroNightGaming.com. Um, I have a contact page there, or you can also join my Facebook group. Uh, we have weekly um, arcade game contests with prizes, um, weekly game recommendations, and also a lot of um, help and support, which, you know, I post um, the latest updates for how to set up your light guns and your trackballs and your, um, your arcade controls. So definitely consider joining my Facebook group. Um, Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.